It's me in the background. <laughs> you in the field with the track stars. Ryan Wright, to Sean Tanner, DJ Jeremiah. Yeah. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This one, this one is big for me because I've I've been studying this topic for a while. Um, if you know, in our Bible study, um, what we used to do a couple months ago, we should do that again. Um, we did apologetics, right? Remember that? All right. So here's the topic today. It's something I noticed from listening to all the debates, the atheist versus Christian debate. And I noticed a theme amongst all the atheists. So the topic today is how to make an atheist. And the reason I say that is because what I noticed from all the atheists when they were debating the Christian person in these big national debates is that they all had a similar story to how they got to become an atheist and to be so against Christianity. And usually the story goes like this. They were a Christian, they grew up a Christian small, or at least they were brought to church or that whole thing, right? And somewhere along the way, they got disappointed by something, something that they couldn't explain. And because it was such a big deal to them, they said, God can't be real. I'm out. Mm -hmm. Right. So here's the problem, though, because they're the ones that were in church learning all the biblical things. And now that they're atheists, they feel like they know why you believe what you believe right so when they're when they're debating you like let's say i'm debating you okay i'll be like you can't say nothing to me because i already know your whole bible i know everything you believe i know what your god is like i know everything about you so they feel like they have the upper hand but 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 watching them i noticed that usually it's a result of bitterness or disappointment somebody died they wanted you know yeah. some sort of physical relationship and the bible told them they couldn't there's usually something that disappointed them to make them turn away. And then they reason their way out of believing in God. Yeah. So here's a statement. I believe that there's some people right now who are on fire for God. You know what I'm saying? Like they're in the church, they praising, you know what I'm saying? They listening to Lecrae in the car. You know what I'm saying? They tithe in everything, mm -hmm. but they're atheists in the making. Wow. And there's certain things I think they need to be careful of to make sure that they don't become the next great atheist. Now, now let's let's ask this question. <clears throat> Cause somebody gonna see our photo, they're gonna see our um video, they're gonna say, These cats is full of it. I'm already atheist. I was born atheist. I ain't believe in God, period. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to those people? Because you do have some people that never they just don't believe in God, period. Yeah. You know and, I mean? and and the thing is, and that's true. Yeah. But what I notice is the people who are the most vile, the people who are the most angry and the ones that want to put down Christianity the most were Christians themselves. I don't think mm -hmm. if somebody just grew up and they didn't have church in their life, they wouldn't be so angry enough to try and fight it. Yeah. These people hate Christianity. I was watching um, I was watching Netflix and I found a, I found a, a movie or a documentary called um, Proving Jesus is not real or something like that, and I wanted to watch it. And it was just like the, the beginning credits were like ex Christian, ex Christian da 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 da, um, decided that he would make a video proving that Jesus isn't real. And then the whole thing was just like a let me tell you a, a, a story, a, 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 um, a fairy tale. And then he went through like this whole cartoon depiction of Jesus, like, and then they said he walked on water, and then they said he did this, he turned water into wine, really, like, it was, like, real fast forward, it, like, really making fun of, um, Jesus, but, again, it was, like, you know, the title of it was Ex-Christian such and such, so, I believe you on that. And, and the reason what sparked this conversation is something we talked off air about last week. And what I notice is there's a lot of people who they start like they're on fire for God. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're in every Bible study. They're, they're open the church and they close the church, right? Yeah. They're, they're like really excited. And I see that same person, they kind of level off at some point. And then I see them deteriorate. They, yeah. Their passion deteriorates. They start being cynical about God. Like, yeah, whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? That, that kind of attitude. And I think all of us have experienced that at some point along the way yeah but what keeps you believing like what keeps your faith going because the people i'm talking about they got to a point where they said i'm out let me tell you why i think it's so dangerous i think a lot of people have god on the timetable they haven't made up their mind that they're going to see this thing through no matter what no matter how long it takes and they've got him on a timetable and so somebody who's on fire right now was like yeah, I know I wasn't living right. Maybe God hasn't given me uh, a wife or I'm not able to have kids because I wasn't living right. But now that I'm living right, I figure by five years from now, I ought to be straight. Well, what happens is they get into the eighth year and they start saying, OK, you know, five years ago, I was cool with this. 
this timetable, but now I'm three years over where I want to be. And now they're looking at God and they're saying, you didn't do what you said you were going to do in the time frame. You should have done it. So, so like, what are some situations that are we saying start to create an atheist? Let's okay. start doing that. I'll say this. If I just remember in my life certain points where I could have gone either way, right? So let's say this. All right, first, first thing that usually happens, especially to a young boy, I don't know how it goes for women, but you get sexually frustrated. You, you know that you're not supposed to have sex before marriage, but you see so many people around you not doing that, and they seem to be fine, right? Yeah. And you start reasoning your way out of it. And at some point, and this, and this is if you are straight or gay. Mm -hmm. I've seen this happen both ways. So the, the problem seems to be a little different. Like if you have uh, a passion for the same sex, you have that struggle, and at some point you give up the fight. But even if you're not gay and you're straight and you, and you just want to have sex with your girlfriend or some girl, you, you just have this battle of why is it wrong? Why can't I do it? You know, if so-and-so is doing it, how come they get to do it and I can't? Mm -hmm. And at some point, people just give up that fight. And instead of just giving up, there's two people that are created. Either they become religious Christians where they follow all the other rules and they just say, well, I'm not good there. Yeah. Or they just give up completely. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And then, okay, so that's, that's to me, that's one of the reasons. But then, this is the next phase that I noticed in my life. There's certain things that I thought were going to happen, like certain things that I believed about my life, because no matter how spiritual you are, how much you know about God, there's, cer there's certain things that you just kind of expect. Like, if I do well, if I tithe, if, I, if I'm faithful, mm -hmm. something good has to happen for me, yeah. right? Like, why would something bad happen for me? If I'm doing all these things right, you know what I mean? You don't expect things to go wrong for you. Yeah. So that's the first lesson in your life is like, okay, you expect something to happen or you don't expect somebody to die that dies. And it's like, why would you do that to me? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm the one that's been following you all this time. Why would you do that to me? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's one of those things that um, like when we saw that uh, years ago, when we saw that Darwin movie, that's kind of something happened when he was daughter. And he got to a point where he was like, God can't be real if he's going to let this happen. Or just in general, some people feel like God ain't real because a little girl down the street got killed in a drive-by. Like, yeah. why would God yeah. allow that to happen? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I think the thing is, um, going back to what you're saying and um, the disappointment, I think that's that's huge. Um, you, you're going to see that a lot. You know what I mean? I mean, scripture tells us that people are going to start falling away. In the end times, you're gonna have more and more people fall away, and I think the thing is, how do you how do you get to that point? You know what I'm saying? Because it's been sometimes, and I'll be honest with you, it's been times where I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm gonna be legit about this thing, or I'm just gonna just leave God. Here's some some of the things that you hear in church that can help create an atheist, right? Mm -hmm. You hear in church somebody will get up on stage and say, whatever it is that's in your heart right now, God's gonna do that for you. If you just keep believing, keep holding on, God's going to do that thing for you, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. And in my head, I'm like, oh, I, I think God is going to give me a house next week. And, and you'd and you be like, what? Well, and he said, he said it would happen. It's like, that's, it can't be true for everybody. You yeah. know what I mean? And I just think when, when people with position and respect get up and say things so blanketed like that without knowing yeah. everybody's specific desires it's dangerous because especially if you like i was young when i started hearing some of those things from people i respected like oh that's gonna happen for you that's yeah. gonna work that's gonna do this and it's like yeah. you don't know that you yeah, don't right. know for sure what god's gonna do with my life right and it's very dangerous to start prophesying over people if you if you're not a prophet yeah you have to be uh, selfless because i know a lot of the times like a lot of stuff that i'm going through currently or even stuff in the past you know my wife like i have to know that these things are not just for myself they could be something for somebody else this could be a testimony so when i meet somebody in a year and i can i can let them know how to get through it, how I made it through it. It can speak under their life. So I, I think a lot of people become selfish when they say, I believe in God. And if, it's, if you're immature in the faith, a lot of things like that are gonna happen when you, you, you'll, you'll think that you're only gonna see prosperity. When it doesn't show up, you think God's a liar. Yeah, what do you think about it, Maya? That's 
actually, I feel like, the fault, though, of other believers that um, that make the pitch or pitch Christ to non-believers because we, you know, we, we sell him like he's a genie, and, and that, it doesn't work that way. Like, I think we need to be honest when we um, offer Christ to people and let them know that he's not just going to automatically fix your problems. He's not just going to automatically give you everything you want because now you profess to be a Christian. But when you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you're giving him your life so he can do whatever he wants with it and he becomes the goal he becomes the prize not you know money your house your car your education even your own safety none of that is promised but he's the reward and we don't as christians do a good job of making that clear to people so how to make an atheist so the reason i say that is because like i said before i think there's some people out there that are listening that listen to all you know gospel music in their car all the time and and 10 years from now they're going to be the biggest enemy to the faith I and I, I just want to make sure that they understand the signs there's going to be things in your life that are going to disappoint you it's going to be really hard and it's going to make you feel like god's not real you got to be prepared for that